Hello, hello, hello. I have some Amulet Titan uh, Amulet Titan replay video here. Uh, this is a match against Sultai Urza. So my opponent won the die roll. I have a very good opening hand here, capable of going once upon a time, dig for either a land or a titan, and then go turn one scout or amulet based upon what I'm seeing. If I'm up against like a Jund deck, I think I'd rather lean on the Amulet to hit the turn to Azusa. Um, and then like drop Scout into play after that. Um, but if I'm up against something where I want to protect the Amulet, I can drop the Scout here. So my entire turn one hasn't been laid out yet because I don't know what I'm up against. Uh, Misty Rainforest into a Forest into Goose tells me I need to be ready for a turn two Oko. So being ready for a turn two Oko means... So I, once upon a time, there was nothing there, so I just grabbed the land, Radiant Fountain. Uh, being ready for a turn to Oko means I don't want to expose the amulet. I'm really land light here. Like, if you just look at this here, I don't actually have enough straight-up lands to cast Titan. So I'm going to need to cheat Titan into play, cheat him into play with amulet and the bounce land. So I want to protect my bounce land, I want to protect amulet, and I want to protect one of my Azusas. So knowing my opponent's best line next turn is to drop a Oko, and they're probably going to Oko whatever I play. I'm going to put the Scout into play and still protect that amulet. Now my opponent does know about the Radiant Fountain in my hand, and I protect. Um, my opponent paused for a while debating whether they wanted to, but it's definitely correct to um, hinder my my growth. So they hit the Scout. Now I drew the prime time, so I don't have to worry about Summoner's Pact anymore. My hand just it's not something I really needed. Nothing to do with the scout except for attack, and I play a Radiant Fountain. I'm still just trying to protect that amulet. What I'm looking for are more lands, another amulet, or something of that. But um, I end up drawing a second amulet, which is perfect, because now my opponent is effectively just dead. Uh, I play the two amulets out, play the Azusa, play the Prime Time, um, and that Prime Time can cha could chain into another Prime Time. Uh, or I can just swing for a lot and start putting threats into play. My opponent has no real clock on me, so I don't have to expose myself to, like, a... I don't have to expose myself to anything here, but my opponent is just straight up dead. And they can see with the Titan on the stack. So it's game one. Now game two. Again on the play. No, sorry, on the draw. Uh, now here I have a turn three Titan hand. Uh, actually, even without the amulet, I have a turn three Titan hand thanks to the Castle Garenbrig. So the way this works is I get to go Breeding Pool into Scout. Um, and then because Castle Garenbrig can cheat me on mana a little bit, I'm going to have five, five mana in play effectively for turn three, and that I can utilize to cast Titan, even without this amulet. So the, the amulet just makes the hand even better. So opponent did mull to six, and they start with a Thoughtseize, taking my Titan, which is correct. I luck out and naturally draw a Titan, so I'm pretty happy about that. My opponent's turn two is a damping sphere. Now I'm wondering if my opponent was so afraid of this of a, or combo kill that they mulliganed heavily for hate cards because now they're down to three cards and they haven't even dropped a threat yet. So because of the damping sphere, I can't tighten next turn because that affects Castle Garenbrig. So I do expose the amulet here um, because if I happen to draw into like an Azusa or another amulet, I can actually still kind of get far ahead. But I couldn't tighten next turn without that. Opponent cheats a little bit with the Damping Sphere EE interaction. At this point, I recognize that I'm going to lose both of these, um, so I do just try to advance my mana. Uh, Rex Sage or Zeusa are the cards I'm looking to draw now, just to try, try to get ahead of this Damping Sphere. So I bounce my land, drop Azusa, and I just try to get ahead on mana, putting as many lands into play as possible.
draw the cavern, played prime time. Prime time triggers, and here's an interesting question. So right now, one, two, three, four, five differently named lands. So I could get Feel of the Dead, which I'm definitely getting. And what is my second choice? Now, generic rule of thumb, most players would say, oh, you have to get, you can't attack with Titan, get, and you're not about to die, get to Larry West and Simic Growth Chamber to start chaining together Titans. And I, I usually agree with that line. Um, except here, it's a little bit different. I have an Azusa in play, my opponent's at 12. Uh, they're holding up either Disdainful Stroke Mana or an Assassin's Trophy, right? So if my opponent did have Assassin's Trophy, I feel like they should have used it with this trigger on the stack, but that is that is besides the point. Um, so I feel like my opponent's probably on Disdainful Stroke, so chaining together Titans isn't really going to do too much, um, because they can... <laughs> I feel like the best way to just absolutely win this game is just play Field of the Dead, get a Bounce Land. Now what I can do is get the Zombie Triggers, then I can bounce the Bounce Land. I've only played one land drop for turn, play the Bounce Land, get another Zombie, return the Bounce Land back to my hand. Um, sorry, sorry, return the Vesuva back to my hand, play the Vesuva copying Field of the Dead, use up all my land drops. Now what I've done there is every single land drop for the rest of the game will make two zombies. So even if my opponent answers this prime time, maybe they're just holding this trophy to buy time. Who knows? Who, who knows exactly what they have here? Now every land drop for the rest of the game will make me two zombies. And I still have a land in hand, so next turn, even if my opponent does something to my board, board wipes, I can drop this castle and put four power into play, putting my opponent on a three-turn clock, regardless. And that's if I never draw anything for the rest of the game. Uh, so my opponent concedes to that, and uh, that is the match. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys think there should have been a different line there, if you think it should have been Simic Girl Tolaria. Uh, I also considered Field Tolaria. Um, that kind of seemed like the best of both worlds, except that still requires me to eventually draw into a bounce land to get that. Um, some key lines in this game, I think, was when I used the Vesuva to copy a breeding pool to get extra green mana and blue mana, in case I ever did draw Teleria West, uh, under this Damping Sphere. So that was the match, and I'll see you on the next one.